it's time to build a house for the occult baby challenge hello everyone welcome back to another video and today we're doing a speed build and that's because we're building a house for our occult baby challenge so we're revamping the challenge we're going to start over a new house or if you guys are just beginning the challenge yourselves this is how i'm going to go ahead and design rooms for each of our occult babies so in this video first of all i'm just going to get rid of all of the normal stuff that's here Whoever built this house, I really loved it, honestly, but we're doing occult babies. In this build, we're gonna be doing vampires, we're going to be doing island elementals, we're going to be doing mermaids, we're gonna be doing Grim Reaper's children. Stay tuned for the screenshots at the end of the video. Um, I'll put the timestamps down below if you wanna just skip ahead to those. But otherwise, let's jump right into the build. So first, we're gonna start off with the vampires. So for the vampire children, I use obviously the vampire pack and I end up using some custom content later on as well from the Tiny Twavelers pack to try to get some more black furniture in here because I figure, you know, for vampires, things should be pretty dark. So for Occult Baby Challenge, you're supposed to have a kid with each of the occult creatures in The Sims 4. So these kids would have vampires as their parents. So the one thing I love is I got them a pipe organ, but I sized it down. I figure it looks almost like, you know, like a little toy piano, but they're vampire kids. So they get a little tiny toy pipe organ to play. And then here's where I use some custom content because I really wanted a dark bed for them. Surprisingly, not a lot of dark and creepy toddler furniture. So this is from the Tiny Twavelers pack. It's just black, basic black bedding. So I thought that was really cute for our little vampire twins. And of course, no creepy vampire toddler room would be complete without some giant scary paintings of Vladislaus or their ancestors or other random vampires. All right, I'm gonna do a couple final touches, but I'm gonna leave this here. Again, stay tuned to the end of the video to see the screenshots of the final rooms for our vampire kids. Next up, we have a room for our island elemental children. So these would be children whose parents are island elementals coming with the beach pack. So the island elementals are the spirits of Sumani. So they're super traditional and they love being in touch with their culture and honoring it by doing things like cooking traditional island food or fishing or that kind of thing on the island of Sulani. So for the island kids bedroom, I tried to keep it super traditional, doing a lot of the island living pack, obviously, and a lot of more muted tones. So this room is potentially for kids a little bit older, maybe they're teenagers. So I put a divider between their beds to give them each a little bit of privacy and you could see their personalities have started to come out with the choice of color between the two kids here. So I thought that was really fun. And I sized down these bedside tables. I don't know why the furniture in The Sims is so large, but I feel like the bedside tables are way unproportional to the bed. So I went ahead and sized them down. And then on the left, we're giving them a cute little sitting area to sit with their friends and hang out with these really cool pendants from Island Living for the lights. And then we're gonna give them a little study area and then a dresser area as well. And these kids have their own ensuite bathroom, so that's pretty lucky for them. And then the last thing I did for our island kids' room is that I'm going to give the island kids just shells all over their room where they can display the seashells that they found on the island of Sulani. And then moving down to the ground floor here, we have the mom's room over here, obviously, uh, on the ground floor as well. And I'm going to divide this room into two rooms for two sets of toddlers. Since you can have a lot of kids in the house at one time when doing an occult baby challenge, it helps to have a lot of different rooms available. And I always keep toddlers on the ground floor, right? Because this is not just about having awesome rooms, but this is also about playability. And toddlers are just a mess. Like they can't climb stairs. They get exhausted just trying to walk across the house and get some food. So just keeping them on the ground floor close to the kitchen is always a safe bet. For our first toddler room, we're going to go ahead and do mermaids and we'll give them a little archway to get into their room so it's super easy, they don't have to deal with the door. And I already found some cool mermaid things, so they have a secret treasure chest, as well as a little bucket and shovel for digging in the sand. So we're gonna go ahead and use those, and I'm gonna swap out these windows for the island living windows. It might look a little silly from the outside, but you know, I don't know, you gotta go all out for the Aqua Baby Challenge. So these kids, their parents would be mermaids, and I wanted to give them a little scuba diving rack with gear, but it ended up not fitting in in the end, so maybe when they're older they'll get into swimming and have their rack with all their swimsuit gear here. And then again, I used a lot of the Island Living Pack, but I wanted to give it a different vibe than the Island Kids Room, so I didn't use as many of the traditional items, so like the wood carvings or the tapestries or things like that. I tried to keep it a little bit more colorful and fun, and then 
it just wasn't fitting with the vibe that I really wanted. So I ended up also using some of the Tiny Twavelers pack for the Island Kids because they have these really cute animals on it. So I used one with flamingos, one with turtles, and they also have this bed frame that looks just like the Island Living bed frame for kids, but they have it for toddlers. So I thought that was just so fun and cute. And I don't know, I just love this room. It ended up being super aesthetic and honestly, it looks like a real life kids room. So I love this pack so much. And then for the finishing touches for our mermaid babies, I gave them this swing also from the Tiny Twelvers pack and this stuffed crocodile. We're just sticking with the outdoor explorer theme, like their kids who are going to grow up and just wanna go and explore the world and hit all the beaches all around the world or something like that. So I just love that for them. And then we tried to get them a rug that looks a little bit like the ocean. So they feel at home. So I just love their room ended up being kind of a pink, green and blue vibe. And also this is so cute. Like when I was putting the screenshots at the end of this video, I was like, I cannot handle this room. This room is adorable. And honestly, I put in one weird thing. It was really aesthetic that I put in one weird thing. And that is a kiddie pool because our mermaid kids, they've got to have access to water all the time. So when they grow up, I would actually put a full pool in here so that they can sleep in the water if they want to. But since they're just toddlers, I gave them a little kiddie pool, which I felt like really just set up the room and made it really clear that these are mermaid kids who live here. So for our last room, and this could be a room either for Grim Reaper's baby or for the, oh, I forget his name, the evil wizard guy who's, oh, the Death Wraith, that's who it is. So the Death Wraith or Grim Reaper, so I was thinking, a baby of someone whose parent is kind of supernatural and you know kind of on that border between good and evil and all, definitely on that border between life and death so what i did for this room is i was trying to do a little bit of rebirth i was thinking of the phoenix and that these kids if they were death wraith kids so their parent is a wizard and also kind of this evil death spirit so as a child of someone like that i imagine they might be you know, pretty obsessed with the concept of life and death and of rebirth and growth. So I wanted to d use the phoenix as a symbol for this room. And so obviously the side closer to us is the death side. Everything's in black. And we use a lot of natural elements, a lot of wood to kind of symbolize that rebirth. And then the far side, it actually has a glass roof. So it's like full on rebirth light. And for that side, we use all bright colors. Kind of the colors of fire is what I was going for, for the phoenix and for the rebirth of our kids. And if this is kind of a dark theme for a toddler's room, yeah, it's, it's kind of a dark theme for a toddler's room. You'd be right about that. But I don't know. I figure if your dad is a death wraith or the grim reaper, you know, you learn these things at an early age. And then the last touch on this room that I really liked is the rocking horse in between the light and the dark side because it's like the little transport to bring the kids from life to death. So again, dark for a toddler's room, but lots of symbolism, so I love it. And then the last two pieces that I did here is whenever I'm designing a house with lots of kids, obviously we're going to have to do the rest of the occult babies when we get to having them, but there's so, only so many rooms we could fit in a house. But whenever I have a lot of kids in a house, I love giving them a little study area for them to come and hang out and build up their skills and be on the computer. So that's what I'm doing right here. I just put these two desks back to back and I'm gonna put a computer on one of them so that the kids can study. And this little activity table that came with, again, the Tiny Twelvers. It's my favorite pack at the moment, I'm obsessed. So we give, we'll give them that to work on our skills. And then I love this little shelf below the window that was already there, but I feel like it's just cute. It looks like one of the older houses, something's already built in and the kids have just taken over it and put their books and supplies everywhere. For the final piece for this house, we're gonna do an entryway and I love entryways. They are so fun to design. So what I love doing for a big family is just making a super cluttered entryway. I feel like this also makes your Sims builds look so much more realistic. So here I just threw out some lockers. I just plant clutter everywhere I could find. I love lockers. I feel like if you have a lot of kids, this just looks so realistic. Like each kid can have their own little locker. They can put their backpack in when they come home. I put kids clutter all over the floor, backpacks everywhere and you can actually change the pattern of each of the backpacks. So it looks like each of your kids, you know, with different personalities came home from school, just threw their stuff everywhere. And I feel like this just makes your house look so much more realistic because if you did have, you know, seven, eight kids in the house, 
this is this is probably what your house looks like i would imagine i don't know but this is what i would imagine so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed this build stay tuned for more aqua baby challenge in this house as well as building the other aqua baby rooms i love you guys for supporting this challenge and i'll see you next time